Welcome back to the Sidious Mac Podcast. I'm Chris Chavez. I'm Kyle Merber. And I am Mac Fleet. It is March 29th, and we're getting ready for the outdoor track season, which seems kind of crazy that it's already late March. But first, before we even get into outdoor season, I've got my old reliable strawberry vanilla Olipop, which is the first ever flavor I've ever had. Still have not had the banana cream. Kyle, give us a review. You just want to drink it on the beach is how I would describe it. Okay. It is. It is. Like, I'm going to be honest, it might not be for every situation. It might not be a winter drink. It is a summer drink, but it kind of tastes like a banana daiquiri. Is that a thing? Um, it's got a little pina colada thing. I don't know. It's like I wanted to throw some some rum in there and sit on a beach. Okay. And Mac, you've got the lemon lime, which is very quickly, I think, starting to become my favorite flavor because I was a Sprite kid growing up, and it's just filled that void in my heart. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a nice alternative, that's for sure. And I'm not drinking uh, 45 grams of sugar for every can that I have. That's yeah, so get the nice little pop of taste and flavor, and I can uh, keep my weight down because I'm not running that much. <laughs> it's <laughs> Olipop. It's good for you. Uh, two, two to five grams of sugar. It's just I I don't know. It just does the trick. Visit drinkolipop.com. Use code city is 25 for 25 percent off all of your orders um that's that's it that's our well, wait, hon, can we peel the curtain back a little bit okay. we spoke to our friends at olipop last week they're very happy like <laughs> kind of blown away at how many of our listeners are using the code there's that and also just sort of like the first question that they asked us was how do we get so many people to tag us in their stories uh, drinking Olipop. So if you've done that or you haven't done so, do it. We've been enjoying it. We always repost people drinking it. But they were very clear, like, well, you guys decided to tag it as the runner soda and it's working. Like, it's, it, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm really thankful to all the podcast listeners, newsletter readers, and the people watching this on, on YouTube for um, really backing us because you know, Olipop is now making a pretty nice investment into to Sidious Mag over the next couple months. And so uh, we're going to keep it going strong. And this is not the last time you'll we'll be cheers and Olipop at the beginning of shows. So, uh, yeah, thanks to all the listeners. You, you made one of our biggest sponsors happy. And so um, keep it up. Now we can keep doing fun stuff. Yeah. And actually, like we're they're they're open to some of the ideas that we have down the road. And so we're going to pitch them on some even more. uh fun more fun stuff funner's yeah. not a word okay all right so for this episode we're gonna do things a little bit differently it's been a little bit of a quiet period uh in the track and field season because it's like we're, the all-star break or something right like what do we do this week we kind of just sit here twiddling our thumbs or you go out and run uh from la to vegas but uh we decided we're going to start off with a not hot takes because hot takes is just so overdone. Can we talk about just the fact that like when people throw out the phrase hot takes, like it's pretty redundant and like they just, it's just opinions. Like uh, Kyle, how would you quantify what a hot take actually is? You need people to get mad at you for yeah. having a take and saying it out loud. What was and the hottest no one... take you've had recently? I think on it from, was it the dopers should be allowed to pace races? Yeah, I mean, I a lot of that is your sarcasm with that. Yeah, regular readers understand that the lap count is oftentimes satire. Or, you know, it's entertainment. But uh, no, I made a whole bunch of suggestions of how we could better utilize dopers in the sport. And um, yeah, you know. Didn't go over hot take, hot take. <laughs> no, I'd say it went exactly. <laughs> it went exactly to plan. <laughs> all right so for this one you texted the group chat and we're just like let's let's throw out some predictions out there for the upcoming season so since this was your idea i'll let you kick us off kyle Give, start us off like what is the one big prediction you've got on the top of your mind for the upcoming outdoor season Ooh, big you know in terms of big prediction i'm gonna say, i'm gonna say what's gonna happen first okay and I don't know if this counts as outdoors. It'll be taking place outdoors. But uh, Futsum, Futsum Zenislasi is headed to Rotterdam, which I know, Mac, you are a fan of. I know you like this move. 
So headed to Rotterdam to run a full marathon. We only saw him run one once before, and he's undefeated. And he ran two eleven oh one to win the California Stephen International Young. Marathon, which doubles as the USATF Championships. He ran a sub 15 5k from 35 to 40k and i think he goes to rotterdam and runs 207 he's been training with naz elite for the past uh almost year or at least like a couple months now um and i mean the group has the marathon pedigree alfine is training really well so i think like there's all signs pointing towards like if footsim's also you know trending upward then i could definitely see this one as a a uh, high likelihood 207 is i guess who's oh, is it only galen and connor mance have run that fast in the last like 10 years yeah i mean connor ran 208 at chicago i think rotterdam's just as fast as chicago and you know cim it's it's a fast course 21101 is obviously done on a fast course that uh it was his first one i think look i'm not saying 20701 but I think we can get under 208. And before I came on and made this prediction, I did check in with some sources who confirmed your boy is very, very fit. Did you just text Ben? <laughs> I don't name sources. I'll All say, right. I'll say, I'll say, I, I do love any American marathoner running these faster courses, but and 207 would be awesome. But wake me up when an American guy runs 205. <laughs> all right but our, so our men compared to the rest of the world are just not like time wise just not competitive 207 well, just, in rotterdam last year would have got you seventh place that seems very doable i mean look everyone is doing boston which i understand because there's a lot of money in boston and it, the timing of an april marathon works out really well looking towards the trials but if you're not a top three American Boston, it's going to be really hard to, you know, convince yourself that you deserve to be on that team for the next number of months. And I like the idea of what's maybe going to a fast, flat course, knocking one out of the park and being like, yeah, I'm coming into the trials with the fastest PB of the bunch, or at least like recent PB. And so um, I think confidence building wise, it makes a lot of sense to me. So root for it. I mean, part of me wants to also think that Connor Mance is capable of like a two oh six in Boston yeah, I, this year. I think, but I, mean, I like this one. The way the wind goes. Yeah, I like I like this this prediction by you, just because it's like it's a he it's a new name to enter the conversation. That's kind of like what adds intrigue over the next you know ten months or so that we have until the next trials. So, uh, solid one, good one, Kyle. Let's hear yours. Well. So I, we want to kind of stray away from just doing them all focused on times, but I did write down one time-based one. I think Yard Nagus will break Alan Webb's American record in the mile outdoors. I When I first cast out the idea, I was like, all right, yeah. I mean, he's riding a hot streak. He was fantastic during indoor season. And then I started to think of just how fast 346 is. And so my well also a couple three forty six high three forty six yeah. high three forty six high. I also hope that when Yard Nagus does it, it's at just a really small meet in Belgium with only you know the couple the dozen Americans who are there training as the same in the same fashion that Alan Webb did it. I could see it also taking place at Monaco and whatever. But the fastest mile that we've seen in the last decade is Century is three forty nine twenty six from July twenty twenty one. The only that's the only sub 350 that we've seen outdoors by an American in recent history. Hawker went 350 97 last year pre, a little overlooked because it was like fifth place in that race. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's something to, to the hot streak that Yard was on. As long as he's healthy coming into outdoor season, now I, I get the fact that I'm talking to two former professional milers. I guess why hasn't it happened or why hasn't anyone really gotten all that close? Like you look at that list and it's just like Steve Scott and Sydney Marie, like all the way up there. And it's like, it's like, how do we, were those guys so capable of going yeah. sub three fifty so many times when it's like, I feel like we're, we've had really good milers in the last decade or so. Why hasn't it been as common? Yeah. I guess the mile isn't run as often outdoors. Why don't you hang up and listen? Okay. <laughs> 
Because they don't run the model outdoors very often anymore. Aside from People, pre, right? Like, yeah. yeah it, like, there's, there's Oslo, but like not every American's going over to Oslo. It's funny because Centro's 349, because that was kind of billed as a record attempt, we just kind of like, ah, like everyone forgets that yeah. like, he ran 349 two outdoors. But th- there's just not that many opportunities. Like, I don't even know when Yard would go and do this, especially with a later USA's. Yeah, I, that that doesn't it's just people don't run it that often, and I don't think that people really care to run that fast. Is that an Oslo problem? Like Oslo should be like moved on the schedule to a different date so that people can run the mile there, because isn't it usually scheduled for like May or June? Yeah, but where like, are you gonna put it? After Worlds, we already got stuff. I, after I, Worlds. Whatever. <laughs> I I think these I think the records attempts should just be record attempts and keep racing like keep the big races to fifteen hundreds. Like I, I don't know. I don't like the. I like the history like of the having Green Mile events. though, and the Bowerman. You know, like that makes. Yeah, sense. I th- keep those. But the like, Joe Falcon so race is going to do it. It's like one of the best of yeah, all time. It, you, I think, showed me that one, Kyle. Yeah, that. What you know? What's happening now with the Bowerman Mile? At what do you mean the Pre Classic? Yeah, what's it's that just, schedule? Oh, because it's the final. It's the DL final. So what are we going to do? An optional last one oh nine. I could see that. Oh, ha- I mean, it has to be a fifteen. So yeah, it's got to be a fifteen. So you either is it, run is the, the Diamond League final fifteen hundred, or you've like it's going to be the, the B crew basically of people who yeah, couldn't get the into B the Diamond race, final, and it'll the still B be race fast. Might be the mile. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what's going to happen. But which is stupid. So I guess we're done. So Yard won't <laughs> do it this year. It'll be next year. <laughs> hey, All right, it'll be next year. He'll he'll do it next year. Pre. Well, that's my whole thinking. So I guess like I picked the wrong year to make this prediction. I'm not good at making predictions. So like this is an off an off year type of move, but I don't know. I think there's just like you only get so many chances to be this fit this and this fast. So I figured why not? So I'm going yard yard and a goose breaks Alan Webb's American record in the mile outdoors. We just need it. Uh, I don't know. Like kids nowadays don't realize like how how cool that mild performance was let's give them something new to really energize them kyle you're uh, mac you're up all right let's speed this up <laughs> let's rip through these uh i've got christian coleman winning the u.s championship 100 meters this year um i think he's going to upset those guys and i think it's because everyone's kind of talking about doubling and i don't think christian has any interest in doubling so I like the fact that he's his just focus on the on the hundred um, is going to vote him really well. And we're going to be able to send four guys right um, to worlds and we'll probably sweep again. I don't know if Krishna will win worlds. I don't I, I would say I don't think he'll win worlds, but I think he's going to win USA's and we could sweep one through four and we're not going to win the four by one. I see the thing is it's like I could see the I don't see how the prediction of Christian Coleman winning USA's is all that hot because Fred won't win it because he probably he already has the buy. He has no reason to run the final. He can just run one round of it and then focus on qualifying for his second event to pull off the double. So yeah, I mean it's likely Christian Coleman can win the the USA's. I think I'm with you. I think US sweeps the medals in the hundred at the world championships. In fact, no country has ever swept the men's hundred medals in back-to-back years ever. So that'd be really cool. And it's kind of, I would say it's bold. I would would say that this is bold because the three guys that he would be beating, or I guess it'd be like, he's you're throwing Noah and you're throwing uh, like the, the three that made the team last year medaled. So it's not just winning USA's it's you're also beating the three best people in the world. I think, I think we see a U.S. sweep again. I think that there's maybe, I, Fred wins again for Worlds is how I see it. I think that maybe Trayvon wins, and but I my little sort of 100-meter prediction would have been that Noah Lyles makes the team in the 100 and medals in at Worlds. A bronze is still pretty awesome considering you know who he's up against. That was sort of my thinking of like, if I have to come up with a prediction for the men's 100, it's, I don't know, say Fred Gold, Trey Silver, 
Noah Lyles bronze. That's my podium. And then, again, yeah, Coleman maybe ends up right outside of the medals. And if this is sort of like, all right, let's come up with a, a bold prediction here. All right. I, well, so- I like I like that Chris is like that's not a bold prediction that he wins and also but you're leaving him off your team. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, because like, I think yeah, Christian I, Coleman might make the yeah whatever. But I think he makes yeah he wins know. he wins USA's makes the team but I don't think he medals at Worlds just like you don't you don't. I could think he's good one. All right, Kyle. so segueing then this is a perfect because yeah. First off, Chris, your stat about like. No, no one has ever, no country has ever gone back to back sweeps. Like, did you have to look that stat up? Like, of course, like that's an absurd. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I if thought... you think about it, it's not that absurd. If you think about how, like, in the whatever it was, maybe like the 40s, 50s, it was like the only Greeks. Americans running like <laughs> the 100 the you know? Greeks went in the 20s. Back back. And the t- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't that absurd. I was kind of curious about it. Or I was wondering, like, had Jamaica ever done it or like whatever it was. So, but no. Uh, there's right, been... so okay. it's not happening though it doesn't even matter because let's let's aisle let's all let's lee let's lee tobogo of botswana is gonna medal and remind the people who he is who the, may not be as U 20 champ out of botswana he ran 991 last year <laughs> celebrating like an absurd amount he's clearly a, a bolt influence and I heard he was going to Oregon this year. He has not stepped foot on campus. He's not on the roster. Is he on the roster? Like, I don't think he's going, but he did run 31.52 in the 300 in South Africa in February, doing the same celebratory antics, shirt off immediately after looking around. Is that altitude? Well, yeah, I mean... You know, 300 for a 100 guy, like, you know, you might be sucking wind at altitude. Um, And then we're going to – he hasn't been announced, but Botswana has a really big meet coming up, which I'm pro, you know, more big meets in Africa. There's a lot of talent there. And so in Gaborone, in Botswana, um, who are we seeing? We're seeing Shakari versus Shelly. So, you know, that's at – 3,300 feet. Fun fact. We might see some crazy times. Um, but I, I just think the talent is oozing out of this guy. And I think had he not celebrated as much last year, then we would have seen like a nine, eight low. So he's my picked up set. Not win, just metal. I, I like how we've all strayed away from the fact of like picking a men's hundred winner. Cause it's, I, you said Fred. I, I said Fred. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, like it, it's sort of in years I, past. Like I, I feel like we're in a bolt era with with Fred, but he's not. I, I I do think that Fred is not unbeatable. Like what we saw from Fernandez Omanyala last year beating him. Like Omanyala is also someone who we might be sleeping on, and is worth mentioning here because he beat Marcel Jacobs indoors, and he beat Fred last year. All that. I don't know. I think that there there's something to to him also being a contender. I don't think Fred is in his bolt era yet, or you can't say that he's only won one. He's won one gold and then one silver. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I guess I, like, I, we really like Fred, and so like we definitely everyone's rooting for him. Yeah, but he is not the lock that. No, he's not a lock. He's often made out to be. Um, I. And many other people probably want him to be that lock, but yeah. he's not there yet. All right, Kyle, hit us with a women's pick. Let's let's uh, let's move over to to the women's well, side for a bit. Um, my next one is I think Sage Hurd is going to make the fifteen hundred team. I think we're done with the eight. It was fun. Everyone, everyone, I, of course, you want to be an eight runner. You don't have to run for one minute fifty seven seconds. But she ran 401 last year in the 1500. And I think this, you know, I'm following her on Strava. She's getting strong. I think I think it's time she moves up to the 1500 and she excels at it. People forget indoor mile champ 2021. People forget. Yeah, I, I, she's probably, I see She's it. probably going to, I was going to say, she's probably going to do the same thing. But nope, I'm running the 800. Um, I hope she doesn't. Maybe, 
maybe there is a crack in the in the in the the top three 800 women this year but it there hasn't been in a while and yeah i i agree with you i think the 15 is the i don't want to say it's an easier team to make but it's well, an easier team to make you have sinclair you know no ellie. ellie it like if ellie is there it's after you know only a few months postpartum so you have heather, heather. Corey, Corey. Those would be like the big ones. And so Sage would have to break in there. Yeah, I think the Which likelihood is better there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Speaking of the women's 800, I this is not the prediction I was going to make, but I think Keeley beats a thing this year in Budapest. I, I, I That's what I'm leaning towards right now. <laughs> so this is a good example of a hot take. Is it? She's silver. She pushed her right away all the way to the finish line in the last like last year. It, like it, she was racing super well indoors. We didn't see a thing run uh, indoors at all. I guess she's training in LA and putting her head down and putting in the work. But uh, I don't know. Is it? Is it crazy? It's a, well, it's a, it's not that you don't have like some grounds to stand on. Of course no. you do, but it's gonna piss some people off that you just said that out loud. All right, so I'll edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my dude you better not <laughs> or or might like garner embrace me it a, chris you're not a journalist anymore or it might garner me like a nice little following among the brits they're like all right one of us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man we're never getting in a thing interview <laughs> that would just be me um well okay so we've kind of mentioned a couple of people to, like in passing just throwing out some names and this is less so about them running fast, but I just think that they make they make the U.S. team, which is what you just kind of predicted for Sage. Shakira Richardson makes the U.S. team in the hundred. Not all that crazy, but like it it, it 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 took me a second to realize that she's never raced at Worlds or USA's like uh, since yeah, because 2019 she didn't make the team. 2021, everyone in the world knows what happened, and then last year bombed at usa's like so i guess like she's has a bad track record at the u.s championships i think this year you know she makes the team and is finally i think running properly i think the first the first step is showing up to this race in botswana i think like there's a lot of excitement of like you know there's you know graphics being made by world athletics step one is she actually shows up to this race um, she did not bomb at USA's in 2021. Just to be, yeah, I would say she she won. Correction, I would say she crushed it. In 2022 is when she bombed at USA's. Yeah, but everyone knows what happened. Yeah, yeah, but you said that she didn't have a good track record at USA's. But oh, yeah, so she okay, won. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and the other person we mentioned in passing was Centrowitz by throwing out that stat. I think he makes the team of the 1500. Like I've just never uh, the 1500. Uh, <laughs> Centro's never time doubted. the 5K. We saw in Australia, we saw his 800, we saw his 1500, we saw his 3K. You know what comes next. Is you he got better and better as you go up? It's time for okay. the five. But like a race like that, I guess USA's is never all that fast. Like it's not a 13 10 race at US. Or what, was, what was it last year? So like he can find himself in it. People forget he ran 13 flat, right? That's what it was when, when it was during that time trial. So. Yeah, I fully if he's healthy, I fully accept uh, could you know see him up there in the five k. I just don't know how that race is run nowadays with like Grant Fisher and and Woody and and even Joe uh, possibly being the ones pushing the pace. So um, I just I, I believe Matt Centrowitz will put it together when the time is right uh, come championship season. So we would just glossed over those names and I just threw out too many predictions while we were at it that Shakari and Matt Centrowitz will be teammates in Budapest. Um, but yeah. All right, Mac, your turn. On the mixed gender four. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Britton Wilson is going to get a medal at world. Uh, we're going to go from zero Americans in the world final to getting a medal and it's oh, going to be Britton Wilson in the open four. Yeah. in the open four. Um, she, I mean, her indoor performance was just like absolutely phenomenal. And that time the what she run 49 mid 49. Yeah. 49, 48 would have put her 
I know this isn't the same thing. I'm aware. Um, that would have put her second. She would have gotten silver. And Shawnee is not running the 400 anymore, so, if she even runs this year. So, um, yeah, I, I think that Britain has a really good shot of getting a medal. I don't think she runs the four. I bet you know if she watched her interview with it's, Sydney. It's way it's, more. It's so much more guaranteed than the four hundred hurdles. I don't understand why she would run the four hurdles at all outdoors with, at she USA. She could win the four hundred hurdles. Yeah, but she, she's, she's not getting a medal at worlds. It. She's not okay. She'll get a medal. She could get a medal at worlds, but I think that she, it's way more of a guarantee for her to grab bronze or silver at in the world level in the 400 than it is for her to get bronze or silver in the 400 hurdles on the global are level. you assuming sydney runs the 400 or the 400 hurdles here 400 hurdles oh see i think sydney's around the 400 at worlds yeah that answer I, she I, gave I, me in that interview when i asked her if she, when we started going over shut hurdles, up <laughs> and she said i was asking too many questions <laughs> <laughs> to me that said i'm doing the 400 interesting um okay so then that, that's the decided then it, whatever she runs and that's kind of the, the deciding factor of yeah. what's easier to meddle in i mean that's kind of crazy to, to say like that but um yeah i don't know yeah all right we're just it's, it's whatever up. one <laughs> i guess uh, the, the, the easiest one is whatever one um sydney doesn't run all right. Chris, what do you think Sydney does? The four or 400 hurdles at Worlds? I think 400 hurdles still. Um, I mean, she has the buy for it. And she just needs to show up. I'm like, does I, the schedule yeah. allow for both? It does, right? Sort of. I don't know. I mean, least amount of races. That's 400 hurdles. <laughs> um, <laughs> the other. Um, yeah. I'm just right now just looking at the mixed gender four by four. Uh, every, no, uh, stop looking at that, that Wikipedia page. Because I was just trying to think of any sort of joke I could come up with it, other than the fact that the whole event is a joke. Uh, hey, do we have any sound effects? Well, it, the no, Wikipedia not... page uh, for the mixed gender four by four has a line in there. It says Michael Johnson commentating at the 2019 World Athletics Championships expressed a concern that while entertaining, the mixed four by four event contributes to an overly busy schedule like why is that in the wikipedia because it's, it's a fact and that's why it's on <laughs> wikipedia <laughs> um i was gonna say u.s wins the mixed gender four by four because they didn't last year right remind me again no, no they, it, well they never run edit the this out box. this that event <laughs> <laughs> stop. 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 i'm so i can stop <laughs> Good job, right. everyone that runs it. But, um, Kyle, right. what's your next one? That's it. I that's I, it. I had I had I had three Sage Tobogo and um Futsum. I had All right, my last one. My last one is who is this year's? This is a mess of a podcast. By the way. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no structure. To it. No, who is this year's Jonathan Davis? Which collegiate? Still Wasco is. It is Joe Wascom. Joe Wascom is making the 1500 meter team. I know he just got fourth at indoors and his teammate beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Joe Wascom is going to excel in, in like just how the 1500 meter finals are run. It's slower. Um, he's going to have a lot of runway in that last hundred meters and he's probably going to be chasing people down. I think he's going to grab one of those spots. So just explain then why do you pick him and not Luke? Luke is a very steady runner. If you look at those prelims and finals, uh, he's very steady. He needed to control the race. I don't know if Luke is strong enough to control the final from the front. And it seems like that's what he needs to do to win. And that's really hard to do. Very few people can do that, have ever done that. Um, generally, the people that make the team are not leading at 800 meters. And I think you can get away with that indoors. Positioning matters more. Um, it's just really hard to do outdoors. I think Joe Wascom is, is really good at sitting and catching people and, and being patient. And I think he's going to correct whatever mistakes he made this indoor season. And, you know, maybe uh, Luke's going to do well too, but no, it, it, Joe Wascom's making the team. Okay. I like that one. I like it. 
Um, staying on the college front, I was just, I'm bouncing around here. Like I, I didn't prep for this podcast. And so, uh, just kind of, uh, my, my mind is still just the whole blur from, from the last couple of days. Uh, Caitlin Tui, uh, I think she's been so focused on trying to make this 5k team, like in terms of just getting the wheels, to be able to close in 4:30 for the mile or faster that I think there's something to the fact that last year maybe she arrived at USA's a little bit cooked by that point just as had much she had raced that she she ran 16:1608 there and finished like 13th um that I don't know it's just the level of focus and more attention to detail and being more purposeful with her schedule that I could see her possibly cracking that that 5k team but it's so hard when you look at Elise Cranny uh even Ellie Hennis is crushing it right now. Josette Norris under Dathan is going to be a force to be reckoned with that the 5k is going to be really, really tough to make, but she's been so impressive over the last couple months that if she keeps it up, stays healthy, I could see Caitlin Tui making the, the 5k team um, for the so yes or no, a definitive yes or no. Yes. Caitlin Tui makes the 5k team uh, for the world championships finishing third uh maybe out kicking i don't want to go that far because then that's mean to one person <laughs> i was just like how i envisioned that race but yeah it, it, she's just she learned from last year's race and knew what the split was at the in the final mile and has been talking about it in like every single interview that she does she brings up the fact like i need to be able to close in like 428 425 um to make the team and Everything we've seen so far has uh, pointed towards the fact that she's getting fit enough to do that. But that wasn't the original prediction I had uh, written down. My other prediction. Do you was have any that, more? I'm yeah, out. I had, do you have Yuli, more prediction? Yeah, Yulimar Rojas double gold in both the uh, long and triple jump. Obviously, we know how great she is in the triple jump, and you know she could break a world record, her own world record there. Yeah. Was, uh, but got to figure long- out the shoes situation. Yeah. So last year, what happened was she contested the long jump at some meet in Guadalajara, Mexico, and jumped six point nine three meters, which is twenty two feet eight and three quarters inches, which would qualify her for the World Championships in Oregon. But she couldn't do it because uh, she was actually wearing the wrong shoes. Um, there are those stack height limits and all that stuff. So she was able to, she was, she scratched and then was injured and couldn't get another qualifying mark. So, uh, I think that now she learned her lesson, packs the right pairs of shoes, can qualify for worlds and win both events. Um, which yeah. uh, hey, I another gold seen... medal, third of the work. Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't seen like what who has who's the last person to have done that but uh i didn't look up that stat but i think Yulimar mar rojas will do it so showing a little bit of love there for uh the field events and then of course like i did try to think a little bit more about the shot put but then i thought krauser's new technique is there's something to it and he destroyed the milrose games basically launched it to where the shot put cage is um so I don't know. It's really hard to come up with like a hot take there. I hope that the U.S. sweeps those medals again. That'd be sweet. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm kind of stuck on other field event predictions. Mondo breaks the world record. Not uh, yeah. We're getting less and less hot as time goes on here. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we we're gonna have to play this back in a few months and see how everything did. See how yeah. this pans out. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We'll do a podcast where we play the clips and then we react to how stupid we sound right now. Um, But yeah, that does it. All right, those are our predictions for the 2023 outdoor track season. We just decided to jump on and record a podcast after missing last week uh, with no episode of This Week in Track and Field. But um, we're back and we're excited for the upcoming outdoor season. We've got, I think, Florida Relays is this weekend. Texas Relays is coming right up. So um it's happening so we will see you guys at the track again very soon peace